Welcome to today's episode of the CIO Water Cooler TV. My name is David Savage, and today I am lucky to be joined by Tim, the Chief Innovation Officer at AIB. How are you today? Good, nice to see you. Making sure that I say innovation rather than information, given that you were the CIO and you're now still a CIO, but a different type of CIO. Yeah, if it makes you feel any better, I get it wrong sometimes as well. <laughs> Before we go into anything else, let's let's just chat about that. Why move from a CIO, as everyone would would just automatically assume, to being the chief innovation officer? Uh, look, I mean, a few things. The first thing is I've done most jobs you can do in IT. Uh, been in the bank for over five years. Uh, had been the the chief information officer. Now I say I have to think, pick my words. Right? <laughs> the chief information officer for uh, for all of that time. Uh, delivered huge change. Spent a lot of money cultural stuff really really happy with 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 what we got done had done it need to do something else um but like working in the bank uh, it's a good place to be there's still plenty of things left to do um so this role frees me up to do a more commercial role and get involved in new things so it was really it's just i had done that job time to do something else and this is interesting so what do we mean about innovation? You mentioned you mentioned their change, and, and I, I suppose with a lot of organisations they're going through various of transformation. And there's all these terms being thrown around. Obviously, innovation has been around for for a while, but what does it mean in its purest sense, as far as you're concerned? So there, really, look, it, it, the definition of innovation could be as simple as we're changing something, right? But if you look at the way a lot of change is done, you have to do certain change. So it could be a regulatory requirement, legal requirement. It could be because if you know something is running out of juice and you've got to just change it, you know, the application or the hardware. Or... So there's change that we kind of have to do. Now, in doing that, we generally try and add value to the to the function, to the business as we do it. So instead of just delivering a change that is a must do, well, you know, a pure grind, you say, well, while we're spending the money, what can we do that improves our business outcomes? Um, so, you know, change can look like innovation, but there can be incremental change, which is step by step by step. True innovation, I think, pushes the boundaries out. You generally have a longer term horizon. Uh, there's more ambiguity, less certainty in what you're going to deliver and how you're going to deliver it. Um, and if it doesn't challenge the culture and the established processes, it's probably not innovation. So when we're talking about challenging culture or the kind of the, the accepted way of working well what do we what do we mean by that I mean how how can you do that when you have let's let's be frank you have an organization where people are quite ingrained in that organization and that way of working so is it a case of bringing new people in or working with partners how do you look at the capability and and pivoting or speeding up change or, or innovation so a lot of it is actually, it's it, like, everything we do comes down to people, process, and technology. So it's, you know, who's doing it, what are we doing, and why are we doing it kind of thing. And um, I think that if you look at banking, if you look at a traditional bank app, and most of them would, would be like this, you open the app and you see a list of your accounts. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a one-dimensional, even though people use those apps almost daily, many customers will use them, but it's kind of one-dimensional. What an opportunity to say we change our digital interaction with the customer. So it becomes more of a lifestyle kind of engagement where we understand what are your requirements, what are your needs, and can we bring those to the platform? And we can integrate them and through integrating them, bring richness and in terms of your understanding. So I'll give you a couple of examples. This morning, we were having a discussion. Um, AIB owns a fintech called Payson. And one of the things Payson does is, you know, it, it works a lot with merchants and merchant payment services. It also does parking payments. So the combination of working with merchants and working directly with consumers, if they want to pay for their parking or pay for a toll, top up their, their phone, whatever. Um, and they have a whole heap of interesting things they want to do. For example, in the sustainability place, but the opportunity, if they look at a business case and they look at the, the eyeballs, the number of eyeballs they get on a regular basis, but if we could find a way to platform their services on our digital app, on our platform, and expose it to another 1.2 million daily customers, changes their business case. So a lot of the innovation of what I'm driving um, to the heart of your question when people are ingrained in the way they work is changing the types of conversations we're having. 
So I had people from the retail side, from marketing, from strategy around the bank come in, and we just had an open practice the art of the possible conversation. Now, getting that conversation kicked off, I had to establish, let's not fall into the trap here, guys, of trying to figure out how we'll govern this. Or let's not fall into the trap of figuring out exactly how we'll do it. Let's just share back and forth, see what pops up, see what we think might have some merit, and then we'll move forward. So even just getting into that innovation kind of space rather than a real doing mindset. And some stuff bubbled right out of the conversation, which there's no doubt would add value to customers. You know, simple things like, you know, on the sustainability uh, side, every transaction you have, financial transaction you have, what if we were to tell you what your carbon footprint was? What if we were able to tie in more information around how you engage with transport? Like, it's all sorts of things. So that customers who want those services, and they are all payment uh, actions, they bring them all together in one place. But you need people to not be parochial. You need people to just genuinely engage in the problem. And how do we think we could solve this problem? Not who's going to solve it, who'll get the credit, none of those things. And in fairness, everybody who came into the discussion engaged as asked. And it was very fruitful, uh, very enjoyable. People went out energized. So while you have to get the day job done, and we do all have a lot of stuff in our work list, you have to make room for this as well. So that you're not just thinking about this year, you're thinking about year three, four, five. Is that the reason for having you in this role? As opposed to, you know, I was talking to, to a completely different organization this morning and uh, innovation kind of came out of the office of the CTO. And I suppose in, in that circumstance, you might run the risk that it's one of a number of different tasks as opposed to, you, I, you, it almost sounds like you're facilitating as much as anything. That's a lot of it, Dave. Yeah, I mean, so my background, I've done marketing, I've done manufacturing, I've done operations, I've done tech, I've worked in FMCG, I've worked in the tech industry itself, and I've worked in banking. Um, and, I, and because I've done a mixture of different things, uh, I'm not unique, but I can have an empathy for the different parts of the organization and the challenges they might have. Uh, and I'm trying to bring that to the to the fore. Also, having had seniority, like I mean, I've had a, you know almost three thousand people work for me in this role in in my old CIO role uh, in the bank, um, and spending you know for over four hundred thousand, sorry, over four hundred million, excuse me, uh, euro a year. So clearly, there's credibility there that I can bring into a room. Um, but a lot of it is how you show up, how you facilitate, how you bring the conversations out. And I think as an innovation officer, you have to have the visibility or the ability to envision a future. But actually, if you're going to deliver it, it can't be your vision. It's got to be, everyone's got to be buying in hearts and minds. So yeah, it is very much a facilitation role at the moment. So innovation is something that <clears throat> sometimes it comes up at an event and, and people roll their eyes and, and we feel like we've been talking it to death for five or 10 years, but still many organizations don't innovate successfully. So given the experience that you've had, given all of that, industry experience in different sectors. What's what's the one piece of advice that you would you would give to a listening audience that might just help them on that on that journey? So uh, look if you look at a leadership organization if you look at the leadership team of a technology organization, for example, I would ask any CIO or whatever the equivalent role is, of what if you've got a hundred people working for you or a thousand people working for you, what percentage of that workforce is thinking about the future, is thinking about innovation and driving toward it. And quite often what you'll find is it is just a small pocket of people sitting in a corner that people can choose to listen to or not. But really the leadership team should be engaged in this. And if the leadership team is, let's say it's eight people, if they're not putting in 10 days as a team to really getting into this a year, then nobody's doing it, right? So my, my, my one piece of advice is if you're not doing it as a leadership team, it's not happening. So you're either in or you're not. Tim, thank you very much for your time today. If you've enjoyed today's episode of the CIO Watercooler TV, please do stay, stay on the website, have a look around. There is plenty more insight.